And welcome back with us inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room. As uh, you've been watching, uh, Karen Nyberg and Chris Cassidy have been working uh, with the SPHERES satellites on a dry run for competition with students at MIT next week. A different sort of satellite is uh, closing in on the International Space Station in the form of a Japanese cargo ship called the H-2 Transfer Vehicle, or the HTV-4, a big cargo ship due to arrive on Friday morning. And with us today here in the ISS Flight Control Room to talk a little bit about uh, HTV, its operation and upcoming activities is the NASA Lead Flight Director for HTV4, Ed Van Sice. Ed, thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning, and uh, very excited to be here. And uh, we've been working on HTV4 um, since HTV3 departed uh, just about a year ago, so it's uh, very exciting to be this close to uh, re being able to reach out and grab it on Friday. Ed, um, launch on Saturday was flawless. Uh, can you give us uh, sort of a synopsis of the last several days of activities and preparations by the crew on board between uh, now and Friday uh, for the capture of the spacecraft. Absolutely, uh, like you said, it was a flawless launch and the vehicle is performing very well. It uh, is a longer rendezvous profile than some folks might be used to when they've recently been watching uh, things like Progresses, Soyuzes that are arriving in only four orbits and then Dragon shows up uh, just a day or two after launch, so it might seem a little out of place that HTV takes uh, six or seven days to arrive. Um, of course, we take advantage of that uh, that time frame. We do a lot of the crew training uh, either the week before launch or even uh, while HTV is on its way. So uh, it's still fresh in the crew's mind. This just this week, uh, we we put them through their paces in flying the uh, the Canadarm2 to uh, get them ready for capture. But as far as HTV itself, um, there have been a couple of very uh, minor things that the team has been working through. One of them has to do with uh, the uh, latching valves, the propulsion system um, on one of the strings of uh, of its um, uh, pr uh, propulsion system. And um, well, basically what that is is a, a sensor uh, uh, issue that they've seen uh, very, very uh, um, sporadically and not very often where it'll indicate one uh, position where the valve is physically some in a different position, open versus closed. Um, so it's actually been a, a good test of uh, the integrated training that we've done uh, to get ready for this mission. We go through a lot of uh, different simulated cases on, on being ready to handle situations like this. The Japanese team has done a very good job investigating what might be wrong and coming up with workarounds. And in fact, uh, right before this interview, we just finished a uh, meeting this morning to make sure we had a good plan in place for rendezvous day. So if you um, hear us on, on rendezvous and approach uh, talking about the prop system a little bit more than what you might otherwise have expected, that's just just because we want to make sure we have all the, the right checks and, and uh, things in place in case uh, the next failure happens. And that's what we always worry about is, uh, and we focus our training on is, okay, the system is designed to handle uh, one problem such as this, and uh, we want to make sure we're ready for that second problem. Um, all that to say, though, that the vehicle is very robust and it's very, uh, very uh, performing very well in, in its uh, flight. It's been doing a, a whole bunch of rendezvous burns to get us uh, to this point uh, to uh, show up uh, on uh, Friday for the ISS. I think our viewers uh, would be interested in finding out uh, why the six days. And uh, it could be two, it could be seven, it could be longer. Why was six days for this rendezvous chosen? Right, so the, uh, the unique thing about HTV and, and some of our other vehicles is that um, the, the vehicle has the capability to launch pretty much at any time as long as the, the orbit path is flying uh, overhead of the launch site. So the um, instead of, let's say, for example, the Progress or the Soyuz 4 orbit rendezvous, the not only does the... Um, the orbit path have to be over the launch site, but the ISS has to be in a very specific place so that that shortened rendezvous can occur uh, and all the timing works out. Uh, with HTV, it has the capability to do a wide variety of uh, maneuvers on orbit, both uh, changing its orbital plane and then also changing its altitude, of course. And that capability allows it to launch um, pretty much at any point, and we call it phasing, uh, with respect to ISS. So we don't require the space station to be at a certain point in the orbit. But when you set something up like that, um, you go from a trajectory that has a just a small number of very large burns to get you to that de final destination to a trajectory that has a, l a lot more smaller magnitude burns. And so that's why you're seeing a six-day rendezvous in this case. And uh, before we locked in the final launch uh, time for uh, last uh, Saturday's launch, um, we could have actually launched on Saturday or Sunday and still rendezvoused for a Friday capture. Um, but once we picked the exact launch time, then it was set up to be a very specific Friday capture. So. 
Uh, yes, it's a longer profile, but it actually provides a lot of flexibility for the space station program to uh, be able to do the launch and the capture operations. And one of our social media questions uh, that we received uh, from at Irish Space Blog uh, actually asks, why did the HTV actually lap the International Space Station? Uh, it's all about Johannes Kepler, I guess. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, it all has to come back to the phasing. And uh, because of when we launched and the, the altitude of, uh, of HTV relative to ISS, um, the, uh, the lower you are, the faster you go, and thus uh, HTV went around and, and did a lap around us. Um, and that all is being set up so that on, uh, actually it'll be late Thursday night here in Houston, um, HTV will show up on the, uh, the same um, velocity vector, same altitude as the space station, just a few kilometers behind us. And then we'll go into what we call integrated operations, where it'll make its uh, big maneuvers to uh, come up underneath us on the, on the R-bar, if you will. Um, and it'll look very similar to what the shuttle did when it did its rendezvous profile, um, except uh, HTV will stop uh, underneath ISS instead of uh, doing the, going out in front like space station, or like the space shuttle did. And uh, on Friday morning, it'll come up from underneath the space station, and the cupola will be a very busy venue with uh, Cassidy and Nyberg, uh, along with Luca Parmitano, monitoring systems and operating the robot arm. How cramped will all of that be, and how carefully choreographed is all of that activity to reach out and actually grapple the spacecraft and then carefully install it onto the Harmony node? Yeah, the, uh, the cupola, everybody's uh favorite place to be on the space station and then uh, I know everybody has seen pictures of what it's like inside and like you said it's a small place um, they do train uh, of course here in Houston uh, to, to do these operations in mock-ups of the cupola but nothing beats uh, doing it the real thing so these last couple weeks uh, we have been doing training in the cupola to make sure they understood um, where their body placement will be for best having access to uh, the different pieces parts of this orchestra uh, really, there are um, three separate roles that all these crew members are playing, and so you've got Karen, who's got to fly the robot arm, and so she needs to be in a certain place. You've got Chris, who's uh, helping her, monitoring um, the robotic system, so he needs to be able to see that information. And then Luca will also be monitoring the HTV systems, and uh, there's a separate command panel to send commands to the HTV, so he needs to be positioned uh, to be able to take care of that. So. Uh, having that all laid out in the cupola and, and doing real training in the real vehicle this week has been uh, really influential in uh, making sure everybody knows where to be and uh, get the job done. Well, Ed, appreciate uh, your insight, and we'll look forward to working with you on uh, Friday morning. We'll have uh, live coverage twice on Friday morning, starting at 5 a.m. Central Time, 6 Eastern, of the Rendezvous and Grapple of the HTV-4. We'll come back on the air at 8 a.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Time for the actual installation work that uh, will take almost two hours to complete, and we're looking forward to that and the arrival of a new uh, ship at the International Space Station. Thanks very much, Ed. Thank you.